Hello everyone and welcome to Tuesday with Luther. I was thinking over the weekend, the last few texts that we've had in the historic lectionary from the Gospel according to St. John, the 16th chapter, have talked a lot about Christ going away, going to the Father and sending the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the Paraclete, the Intercessor for us, who prays for us with groanings too deep. And it really creates a new understanding of the baptismal life. You know, you have that popular song from Annie, the sun come out tomorrow. And it may. It may be that today you are depressed, anxious, and stressed, and tomorrow things get better. The sun comes out and you're happier. Or it may not. Clouds may grow thicker, storms will gather, and the storm may not storm may not end. It may just continue on your whole life. So where do we turn? <clears throat> when tomorrow doesn't bring happier days, when the same problems we have just get worse and worse, when the cancer doesn't go away, when our spouse grows colder, when our children move away, when our faith weakens and doubts grow and sin increases. Well, you can look to yourself for strength, try to have some willpower and self-control and try to solve the problem. Seek solace in the gods of this world be they the gods of medicine, gods of counseling, <laughs> any of these gods to solve our temporal issues. But who are you? You are not a pagan, heathen, an unbeliever. You are a baptized child of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You have been marked as Christ Jesus' own in holy baptism. That is who you are. But in doing that, you are also now an enemy of this world. This wicked, evil, deceitful world that desires nothing more than to crush the faith, to crucify Christ. You are an enemy of the devil who will constantly attack you bringing many burdens and sufferings, that stone sitting in your gut, that weight dangling over your shoulders, that cloud that doesn't seem to go away, and your own conscience, your old Adam, constantly struggling and fighting the Holy Spirit. Luther had two psalms, well, a bunch of psalms, but two that he really enjoyed and sought solace in when he had times of anxiety and depression, and especially when his wife struggled. I mean, can you imagine when Luther would go away, Katie Luther would always have the worry, will my husband return to me? <laughs> will he be captured by somebody, or will he die a physical death, you know, from his health problems? So Luther sought comfort in two psalms, and he comforted his wife, Katie, and one of them is Psalm 31. It begins with, In you, O Lord, do I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness deliver me. Incline your ear to me, rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress, and for your name's sake you lead me and guide me. <clears throat> what a great opening to a psalm that brings us such comfort. Be verse 9, Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eye is wasted from grief, my soul and body also. For my life is spent with sorrow, my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my iniquity, and my bones waste away. In deep anguish and sorrow does the psalmist inspired by the Holy Spirit write this psalm. And we, 
the believer called by the Holy Spirit pray this psalm for our comfort. So I encourage you, if you are, or when you are, because there's no if, it will happen. If it's not happening now, it will eventually. When you're in times of sorrow, of anxiety, grief, either over what is being done to you or what you are doing yourself, either persecution or personal sin, turn to Psalm 31. Read it. Memorize it. Make it a part of you. And trust me, you won't be sorry for it. Another psalm that is very comforting that Luther gives as a help is Psalm 130. And he wrote a hymn on this psalm, From Depths of Woe I Cry to Thee, which is in our Lutheran service book. This is one of Luther's catechetical psalms on confession and absolution. The psalm goes, Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord, O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, that you may be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchman for the morning, more than watchman for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is plentiful redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all his iniquities. <clears throat> more than watchman for the morning. We wait for our Lord Christ, not in fear and anxiety, but in anticipation that he may take us from this valley of sorrow to himself in heaven, either in our own death or in his second coming. One more psalm that Luther enjoyed and that I have sought a lot of comfort in is Psalm 90, the only psalm written by Moses. We think, well, Moses is the giver of the law. How could Psalm 90 be comforting? It talks about God's wrath and his anger and how we are dismayed by his wrath. We're brought to an end by the wrath of God. God kills us because he is angry. Not just at sin, but at the sinner as well. We are brought to an end. But you read that opening verse, verse 1. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God, our dwelling place, our refuge in all generations. When you have those times of anxiety, stress, and concern, don't sit around pondering, how can I get over this? Go to the bookstore and find some worthless $22 book that's going to give you 12 easy steps to feel better about yourself. Or do these 24 things and all your problems will go away. Don't trust the televangelists who have nice clean white teeth and smile and are really pretty boys who sit there and say, if you just do this, then everything will be better. If you smile more, your day will go better. Make sure to laugh one time. This isn't found in Scripture. What we have in Scripture is Christ saying, Worry not. For just as your Father feeds the birds of the heavens, so He takes care of you. But then the greater promise of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ for your salvation. There is the promise. The Father never lies. He sent His Son to die for you. So read these three Psalms, 31, 130, and 90. And know that you are kept in the refuge of Christ, protected forever against sin, death, and the power of the devil, not by your own merit, but through the merits of your Lord Jesus. God bless you this week. May the joy of Christ fill you abundantly. For fear not the world, Christ has overcome the world for you.